Hey guys, Steve Blair. Today we got a game in the Ben Symphoria Mordoff. Bay and Sims. Bay and Sims should be on pretty much all your destroyers, in my opinion. If you don't have Mordoff, go ahead and put Halsey in there. Copy that build, and you're just going to have minor tweaks. Uh, Land of Fire Domination Mode game here. This is going to be a little bit more advanced strategy. A lot of times we do a pretty good mix on this channel between uh, content geared towards more beginning uh, level players and more advanced level players. This is going to be a little bit more advanced in my opinion. It's domination mode if you don't understand the basic premise. Basically you want to capture and control one flank and capture and control the middle on a three uh, capture point game like this. Okay, if there's four then you want to try and control the triangle formation uh, side of the map. But here we're going to go into C here. We're going to capture this and then we're going to respond. Now, ideally as an American destroyer, our strategy, we would like to go capture the base that we spawn on, killing the destroyers in the area, move to the next cap, capture that, killing the destroyers in the area, move to the next cap, killing the destroyers in that area and capture that cap. That's kind of how we become the sheriff. We just own the play, kill any destroyers that we run across and capture and control all the bases. Here though, we will capture C after a little bit of a fight, but then due to the circumstances on the ground, or rather the C in this case, we're going to have to alter that basic strategy. So this is why I say this is a little bit more advanced. It's one of the few types of games where me as an experienced player, I got about 12,500 games played. I don't know where we're at exactly, but we got a lot of games uh, played in this World of Warships Legends here. But these type of situations are the ones that get me to uh, pause when we're playing the game and say, okay, how do we pursue this? What's the best strategy at this point in time? So interesting game point from my perspective here. Zoning Torps launch there. Of course, we're uh, relying on the twist and track. Icarus pops up. Support ships. He's got some. Uh, he's got a battleship, Gneisenau, and a Zara behind him, both about 10 kilometers away. So we're going to elect to shoot at the Icarus, try and get as much shots in as possible. We do pop the smoke there, and note everything disappears okay now we are the destroyer we are primarily responsible for spotting this cap so we immediately respond to that yes as an american destroyer we have a two minute uh smoke and with the guns that we have on this that's a potential uh potentially very dangerous offensive combo but if nobody's spotting it is our job to spot so we did get some shots on the guys now there we're getting some blind fire shots once he shoots the smoke fire penalty comes into play okay his uh, detectability nearly goes to max. It's a little bit less, but uh, Icarus comes around here. He's trying to suicide rush the battleship who's close to him. Icarus shots away, torps away, and we're trying to pile on the damage here. And the suicide strike, successful. He he goned our uh, battleship, the North Carolina, right off the bat. So we're already not off to a great start here in terms of the team. Uh, but Gneisenau, visible currently we still do have the smoke active we know we got the icarus low and we also know the icarus has just just charged his uh torpedoes into the north carolina and the mid-tier british destroyers do have a long torpedo reload so i'm not worried about getting torped in this instance and we're just trying to drive the gneisenau back because you can see we already captured c and now we're getting some fires on him he's heating up and one more salvo here and he's actually going to be uh, fully on fire there. So we're going to get some permanent damage for the duration of his damage con uh, cooldown here. But we're trying to mainly say to ourselves, okay, where is this Icarus? What's he doing? That's why we launched those torps. Of course, we're not going to hit the Gneis now. He's already outside of a range and he turned off. But Twist and Track suggested perhaps the Destroyer is coming over here. Now we do have B, which is important. And then A is... Uh, Largely being controlled by Red, although they haven't yet captured it. Icarus, due to our uh, intelligence gathered by the radio locator, actually is where we suspected. And we're going to wither him down with this gunfire, and he's going to go down. So, objective one and objective two complete. Capture the base that we spawn on. Kill the destroyers that are playing in that area. And here's the Shiatsu. That's the other destroyer on the enemy team. We're going to go ahead and take these shots. Uh, we do have some ships on red that can potentially hit us but they're not major threats okay Gnai's not exactly accurate zara yes he might get a shot off on this but it's slow reading slow reloading guns on the zara so even if he waxes pretty good there uh not that big of a deal but 
both enemy destroyers down. We're going to go ahead and take a shot at the Zara here and then reassess the situation because B is now currently, uh, once again, firmly under blue control. Take a couple pot shots on Zara, reevaluate the situation, check in where our torp reload is, check in the situation, check in the heading, and then noticing on the map, okay, well, our only battleship support uh, is leaving. Okay, and there's still a cruiser over here. We're still spotted, so we could use the support from the battleship. In fact, if he killed that Zara, then we no longer really have to be that concerned about what's going on here, right? But due to the fact that we no longer have the battleship support, and due to the fact that this cruiser could easily push into us and drive us off the cap, now what do we do? Okay, do we go to B? Well, we already got B. We already killed the destroyers, so some of the goals that we would like to pursue are already gone. Another option, go all the way over to the other side of the map and get A, but that's a five-minute proposition to get over there. You know, whatever it actually is, three, four, or five minutes, that's huge percentages of the game time, 30% plus. Okay, so due to the fact that Red can actively challenge this and due to the fact that they can actually wipe us out quite quickly if the Tsar and the Gneisenau want to actually push in here and drive the destroyer off, they could have C very quickly. Then they'd have A and C, and then... You can see on the map, red would control both flanks pretty readily. Okay, blue's basically clumping up. I don't know if there's some sort of black hole structure that's sucking every ship into one singularity, one single point in time and space in the middle of the map. But we don't know. We can't see black holes in this game. They just kind of randomly happen. But nevertheless, if we allow red to get on to sea, they capture the base, then they have two sources of income, and now they have flanking shots in the entirety of the team. So... Even though I'm like, well, can I defend comfortably against the Ganais now? Can I defend comfortably against Azara if they push in concert? No. The answer is no. We're not going to fare very well in that situation very often. But what else are we going to do? Okay, the other options that are available, not that great. We could join the clump in the middle, get surrounded, and watch our uh, team, even though we have a score lead. You know, we're tied in ships, and we could watch the game quickly go down the tubes. Or we can do our best to try and slow down the push. And slowing down the push is a very useful strategy. It's not very well understood by the common uh, player out on the streets. But, you know, even if we're experiencing situations where we're overloaded to start the match, let's say we spawn on C and then everyone on our side leaves except for us, well, we can slow them down. We're going to lose C in that instance, of course, but we can slow them down, allowing our team to try and gain advantages where they can. Or in this instance... Here we already control the cap. We've evaluated the fact that our other options limited. Okay, the ships that we can rock and kick the crap out of, a.k.a. the destroyers, they're no longer in the game. And the fact that the other base that we would like to capture is going to basically take a huge amount of the time just to contest it. And meanwhile, they'll just go ahead and flip C, which would put us down 2-1 to one caps for the majority of the rest of the game. We're just going to go ahead and stick around here. Now, how do we do this safely is the question. Now, we're keeping an eye on the Zara. Once again, the Zara making a major mistake here not pushing in, okay? And our team, by the way, also making a major mistake not coming over here to kill that cruiser. All right, when you're evaluating the game, especially the later into the game you get, you always want to note who's got the destroyer advantage, red or blue, or is it neutral? If your team has the advantage, if blue has the advantage on destroyers, all you should be doing is killing the cruisers. Kill the ships that pose the biggest threats to the destroyers because if the destroyers are played well, they can single-handedly win the game or maintain the lead, okay? But the Zara, once again, he's not exercising his uh, dominance over our ship. He's hanging back. He's waiting for shots, waiting for us to be spotted, uh, really not doing anything for the majority of the game. So that's a major uh, problem for the cruiser there. Nevertheless, Gnai's now pushing in here, and we're... We're reminding him, okay, we got a destroyer over here. And if you've ever played battleships, you know, the most common response for a battleship <laughs> encountering a destroyer is to get mad and go on to Reddit and suggest uh, nerfing the destroyers. They don't like to push into destroyers, and with good reason. Okay, you're going to be outspotted by the destroyer. They're going to be sending torpedoes at you. And if played well, you're not designed to win that fight. He did send torps over here. Luckily for us, they ran out of range. I think we probably still would have dodged those, but nevertheless, we sent our own torps down there, and that was just due to our experience. Where does he want to go? Of course, he wants to get on the cap. Uh, we're going to come over here. We're going to do two things. We're going to spot, 
now we don't really have any blue ships to uh, shoot at any ships that we spot. But ideally, we would have some ships in the middle that could come over here. And then we're just going to go ahead and reset because look at all the HP we got. Playmaking currency is how we think of HP, especially as a destroyer. Okay. Now we have three quarters of our HP available. And we got a Gnize now. He shot us there with his HE. Knocked out our steering, but that doesn't really matter. We got a build that counters that. Uh, damage and these low accuracy shots we're going to do our best to dodge uh, more module damage no big deal but look at this torps 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 and down he goes okay so we got a bunch of base resets zara spotted now he shoots over here that keeps him spotted for 20 seconds and now we're going to pepper 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 him and now we get all these resets and even though we are no longer generating the uh the background points from c because the base is contested it's being actively uh flipped by red because we keep flipping or we keep uh resetting these guys rather well they're not actually gaining control though so they're not getting any income they're just blocking our income from it but look on the other side of the map red is now blocking their income on a they're winning the fight over there we got a huge ship advantage and all we're trying to do is slow this down okay and now we got all those ships dead we got the score lead we can no longer lose this game doesn't really matter what we do at this point in time so not a you know it's a decent damage uh game here and yes we did kill one destroyer and we hit the other destroyer for a couple uh shots here and there but usually with the americans we'd like to see two three four base captures and that's how we would consider that to be a really sound american destroyer game but this one was effective because we recognized if we leave c immediately red goes ahead and gets it and then now our team's going to be surrounded and the other options were limited no destroyers okay and even if there were destroyers if they were all the way on the other side of the map around that a cap that still diminishes the uh impact that we can have on those guys in the near term future okay so we want to always be evaluating plays what can we do immediately okay we can always sail over to the other side of the map no matter what the situation in the game but when are we going to have an impact doing that well not for a long time if ever okay so we want to be looking for opportunities to impact the game now and by defending C, we prevent these ships who, once again, had they pressed the advantage, had they had the guts to charge into the Benson, they would have slaughtered me, they would have captured C, and Red probably would have won this game. But we did our best to slow them down, defend the base, and that helps our team win the game, and we're going to wind up with a pretty good score, and we're going to have the top score on the game. We give the teammates a good game in response for a well-played game there. So that's a look at the Benson for you guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel? Well, consider subscribing. We've got lots of World of Warships, and it's coming all the time for you. Check out the patch notes coming tomorrow. Stay tuned for that, and we'll see you all later. Peace.